Hello everybody, we're the Roaming Rosses, coming to you live from Portugal. We just finished the Camino, um, mm -hmm. and we just, you know, thought we'd make a packing video because personally I watched like five or six of these before getting ready for the Camino because you just never know yeah. what you think is appropriate to bring. So we're going to make one for you guys as well. This is my second time walking it. We still sat down together and watched so many packing videos, and I think that it really helped us even dial in our pack more. <laughs> So we really want. Is everything. They say for through hiking, even though this is a, more of a pilgrimage than a through hike, uh, ounces turn into pounds. Or if you know, for European standards or worldwide, you know, grams turn into kilos. Yeah. So the lighter your pack, the more you'll enjoy the Camino, the more fun you'll have. Your body will thank you. So this is kind of what we packed even though we are traveling longer than just the, for the Camino, so we have stuff in here that you probably won't have, yeah. or you'll have stuff that we probably didn't have. So many people have asked, and we wanted to show you now that we're done with walking the Camino Francis. So yeah. Grace is gonna go first, and we're gonna explain what's in her pack. Yeah, so since I'm a girl, I obviously need different things than Christopher. So uh, I would first recommend getting a good pair like one good outfit for hiking and something you can do every day. I bought Lululemon shorts and then I bought a brand called Rabbit for my everyday use um, hiking shirt for everyday wear. Like I personally only packed two sports bras. Um, one was Lululemon, one was Reebok. Now, when it comes to like sleeping and or going out or traveling clothes, I brought a pair of leggings. I have some linen overalls, which if you guys follow us, you'll see me wear these quite often. Um, they are the most universal thing I could have brought. I have some sleeping shorts. Again, optional. You can choose any of those extra items that you brought to sleep in, but I wanted a specific pair of sleeping shorts. Um, so yeah, once again, we packed for a lot longer than just the Camino. We hiked in the summertime, so we mostly use summer clothes. Well, I packed three pair of socks, but since then I've lost a pair um, due to outdoor laundry because everything's hung on a line. <laughs> <laughs> and that was probably my fault. <laughs> it's okay. But I did pack three. I packed a long pair, and then I packed two ankle. Um, this is preference. Uh, I know a lot of people hike in different lengths of socks. I personally like ankle socks better, um, but I did pack a pair of long socks. Packed my Copaxi Puffy. This thing gets pretty small, as you can see, but it's really warm and it is very, very nice. When it comes to like uh, me personally, I only packed two sports bras because I packed two of these little um, like tank tops that act as a bra. These are the one of the most universal things I could have brought um, because I can also wear these with like a skirt, a dress, like whatever it is, this can go under it. I have two of those. I also packed two buffs. So again, some of the most universal things you can have. Um, I would recommend having at least one of these. I have my raincoat. Um, I use this at least three or four times. It was drizzling slash raining a few of our mornings and um, you just, you should always have some kind of rain gear with you. I got to go along with that. This was for my bag. It's not, my bag is not waterproof, so I bought a rain cover for my bag. Um, you can get these on Amazon. They're very cheap, very easy to find. Because we're going on a nine-month trip, I have like a swimsuit in here and uh, a dress just for going out in the town. Um, but I didn't think that that's not a total necessity. Um, you can get away with just packing hiking clothes for the Camino. So yeah, I will say uh, there are a decent amount of pools along the Camino at albergues if you want to go swimming, like if you walk it during the summertime, that I would probably recommend, you know, bringing some sort of swimming gear. Um, also something I'd recommend packing is some kind of like laundry bag. If you do bring multiple pairs and you can't, like multiple pairs of clothes and you can't do laundry, you're going to want to have to separate them because otherwise your stank's going to get on all your clean clothes. <laughs> so <laughs> Stanky. Um, this is from my sister-in-law Casey. She got me some bags and they have come in like really handy. Um, also I would recommend having packing cubes. Packing cubes are gonna get your clothes down to the smallest level possible, which is like such a big deal when you're carrying so many things and you have to pack it as tight as possible. So I have a packing cube for my clothes, um, toiletries, and then my other one is for my clothes as well. Shoes, which 
Both Chris and I walked in the Ultra Lone Peak 6s. Um, mine are now retired <laughs> because I did wear through them quite um, quite well. Um, the inside of the heel is both taken out and then I do have some wear and tear on the outside. But these things are guaranteed for like five to 600 miles. So if there's one pair of shoes you should buy, I would recommend these. Um, they're really lightweight, they dry incredibly fast and they're like, if you look at the toe box, it's just super wide. So you have all that room in there for your feet. And then I did pack a hat. I also packed a sun hat. Twinning. <laughs> I also packed a sun hat, but that also got retired and given away um, because it was just interfering with the back of my pack too much. So I gave it to a friend and I lived in this thing on hot and sunny days. Um, these are amazing. Actually, um, Capaxi, if you want to sponsor me, that would be great because I love this hat. We're going to get to like toiletries. Um, I packed just your normal stuff, you know, like your toothpaste or tooth toothbrush in your case, um, deodorant. I personally packed perfume because we're going on a long trip. Um, Q-tips, headbands, and then I also bought the shampoo bars, conditioner, um, like a bar conditioner, a bar soap. Um, everything else is just like, I didn't pack makeup, I didn't pack anything like that. Um, you're just not gonna need it on the Camino. Um, if you're there to impress somebody, you're probably not there for the right reasons. <laughs> so you probably don't need to be packing makeup. Um, personally, that's what I think. Um, but it's just really the necessities. Like, I, like Chris said, ounces turn to pounds. So the less liquid and le the less heavy stuff you can eliminate, the better. Um, now I packed, um, of course your phone chargers, but like, do not forget to buy one of these. This is your adapter. So this is a universal adapter. You can take it almost all over the world. It's gonna have every prong option available. So these are like 20 bucks on Amazon. Don't forget to buy one of these. Invested in an anchor um, battery charger or battery pack. This thing has like six charges in it. Um, it's good for like ever. Uh, I would recommend buying one of these because you're not always going to have a plug in your albergue available. So you're going to want to have to charge your things. Chris and I both also invested into the new generation AirPods because you can do audio sharing. So we decided to invest into these guys before we left so that we could listen to the same music, books, podcasts. But headphones are definitely a must for us. I brought my laptop but that's, I'm not gonna bring that out. That's an extra, you definitely don't have to bring your laptop. We brought them because we're hoping to not only produce videos, but work a little bit overseas. So that added a ton of weight. Um, sleeping liners, this is another thing people probably don't think about. I didn't think about it. Chris had to remind me to buy one of these. Again, these are like $12 on Amazon. This just goes on your bed. Um, now you'll sometimes get liners in albergues, but just in case you can't count on it. This is acted as my sleeping bag, my sheets, my pillow cover, everything. Um, buy one of these, super nice. Remember to bring your microfiber towel and a microfiber washcloth if that's something that you um, don't have already. You need to remember to pack those. Something that I didn't think was gonna come in much handy as it did is a tote bag. Um, tote bags, we use this every single day when we went grocery shopping. We made most of our meals in the Camino if there was a kitchen available, and every single day I had to whip this out so we could carry groceries. Me pack is also one of those things you will always probably need. Um, you're gonna wanna take your wallet, your change, your passport, all that kind of stuff with you wherever you go, whenever you go out and leave your bag behind. Um, those kind of things, you're gonna wanna have those on your person at all times. So a fanny pack is your best friend. Not the most fashionable thing, but you know. These are collapsible wine cups. This was a gift from my sister-in-law as well, Jacqueline. Uh, she bought these for us as a present for our wedding. I can't get them out, but yeah, I got it. So these are collapsible. Um, now we brought these because we weren't planning on everybody having cups, glasses, things like that. We use these at the cathedral. We bought champagne and we poured champagne into these and we enjoyed them while we looked at the cathedral and cried. So <laughs> these came in handy more than a few times. Um, these are also extra, but they were incredible. We loved them. Other than that, just your bag. So this is my bag. Um, it is the Osprey 
Unina 45, so that means 45 liter. Um, this thing is meant for through hiking. It's like super lightweight. It lays like a pound, I think. Maybe, maybe like a pound, maybe a little over. Um, it's really breathable, super lightweight. Um, it also has this like fancy little air, air vent for your back. Um, it's quite expensive, but Osprey has lifetime guarantees on all their stuff. So I invested and went, went with this guy. Um, this bag was wonderful. I don't really have any complaints about it except I could never reach my water. <laughs> but I had a husband for that, so it worked out okay. Other than that, that is most of my stuff. So um, we'll give it to Chris now. Cool. All right, so I'm not gonna go into crazy detail, but I'll start off with what I wore every day. Sunglasses, Gooder is a must. We both have them. They are incredible sunglasses. They stay on your face. Uh, they're made from 100% recy recycled plastic. We love that. So definitely invest in good sunglasses. Now, um, socks, you really want to wear good socks while you're on the Camino, not cotton, not you know your standard white Nike Adidas socks. You want merino wool. Darn tough, smart wool, anything like that. But I highly, highly, highly recommend darn tough. Um, this is my second time walking the Camino, no blisters. So get something that's moisture wicking. These dry super quick and you can wash them, hand wash, wring them out, always gonna be good. Uh, then we have my walking shorts. These are just Janji. Uh, I'm not super familiar with the brand, but very nice running short, running clothing brand. Um, very breathable, they have liner. So yeah, very, very nice. Um, got a Marmot uh, hiking shirt. It's, I think it's some sort of SPF rating as well. I'm not sure, but it was just, you know, your normal button down shirt and it did great. Grace made comments that when we'd walk into cities, um, by the time we'd get the pack off and start walking into town, my shirt would almost already be dry. It's crazy, really nice. All right, so that's pretty much it um, for what I wore every single day. Backpack, I have a Hyperlite Mountain Gear backpack, again like hers, uh, made for through hiking. It's uh, frameless, so it can collapse, I mean, to that small. It's very lightweight, I mean, less than a pound. It's pretty much waterproof, but I also line it with a trash compactor bag, which Sounds kind of like overkill, but I've had this bag for about five years now, and there's starting to get little rips and tears and stuff. So I think there's yeah, hole there and rip there. So. Better safe than sorry. Better safe. Oh, I forgot. Like she said, Ultra Lone Peak Sixes. I don't think they're making the fives anymore. Um, crazy, crazy good shoe. Guaranteed five, six hundred miles out of these things. Um, huge wide toe box. I only wear these and flip flops pretty much. So my toes are always hanging out, not rubbing together. Which toes? These toes? These toes. These toe, <laughs> these toe thumbs are chilling. Uh, for my outer layer for chilly mornings, I have a Patagonia Puffy. Um, it's very lightweight. You can pack it down like crazy. It was very warm for us. We hiked in the summer, but sometimes you can get some chilly, very chilly mornings up in the mountains. Lastly for clothing uh, that I would wear uh, most days is my rain jacket. I just bought this off of Amazon. It's Camel Crown. I've never heard of it. Uh, and it's actually too heavy. There's a brand called Frog Togs. I highly recommend. I've hiked with them for years. They're very, very, very lightweight material. You can buy them at Walmart, Amazon. They're crazy cheap. They're crazy light. Um, they're everything you need. So this is just the rain jacket I had and I didn't want to pay more money for a separate rain jacket. So here's the rest of my clothing bag. We'll just fit clothes in here, swim trunks, uh, other tank tops. These are kind of like my town clothes. So I would just have tank top, shorts, and flip flops every time we'd get in from walking. So you want your one set of hiking clothes and then one set of just going into town clothes. You don't need anything else in here. The only reason I have this is because we are traveling for eight months, but you are definitely limited on clothing options. We're going to be going through a few different climates, a few different countries, a few different continents. So 
needed to do a little bit more. Like what Gray said, sleeping bag liner. Uh, I don't know what brand this is. Yeah, Vumos works as a sheet, as blanket, everything. It's so hot in the summertime, you don't need a sleeping bag, so don't bring a heavy sleeping bag. And they're really expensive to microfiber towel. Uh, I left mine in a different outbreak, I had to pick up another one. And this is really nice. Uh, you can find all this stuff all along the way, but it would probably be cheaper to buy it in your home country. My toiletry bag, very simple. I mean, just yeah. essentials. And then my med kit, so. We Some, got more use out of this than we thought we would. We got way more use out of this than I thought, so it's kind of beat up. <laughs> it's got holes in it, but really what you need is some good adhesive tape, ibuprofen, band-aids, um, antibiotic ointment, and some moleskin. Mm, yeah, moleskin. That's really all you need. The only thing um, I would recommend maybe is uh, you might want to pack gauze just for the rare yeah. emergency like slicing your finger open with a pocket knife. Um, me. Um, so yeah. me, maybe pack gauze, but you don't yeah. have to. Um, that's just something we actually needed and we didn't have. Yeah. So. Shout out to the Dutch girl that came in. Dutch came in clutch uh, when <laughs> this. Huh? Oh, good. Uh, so <laughs> the Dutch came in clutch uh, with the gauze when Grace was passing out on the random roadside. Kind of like what uh, Grace said before. Whenever you you get into town, you don't want uh, you don't want to take your pack everywhere, but you still need to pick up either souvenirs or food, whatever. So I have a small bag. This is actually still <laughs> full of cookies <laughs> <laughs> and sunflower seeds. So something you can can you know fold down really really small, really lightweight. Um, you don't need this. You could do with. I mean, last time I walked, I had a drawstring bag. So just something to carry your water bottle, something to carry your wallet. I mean, you could still fanny pack it up if you want. Um, just something lightweight where you can hold all the necessities. As a dude, beard trimmer is a must. Let's see. Sunscreen, sunscreen, sunscreen. If you're walking in the summer months, you're gonna need it. So, did carry the MacBook. Had to uh, edit these videos and trying to hopefully get remote jobs so we can continue traveling. What we love to do. So, any of you guys are hiring remote workers with not a lot of experience working remotely, but we have a lot of life experience. Let us know because we have a lot of different skills. We just haven't transferred those online yet. So, looking out for that. Same as her. Anchor battery charger. I use this every single day. Plugging in AirPods, plugging in the mouse, if the mouse died, plugging in phone every single day. And the GoPro came with this case, which is super nice, holds all the cords that I need. And like what Grace said, you need a travel adapter. So this is a really good one. This is called Epica. Um, it's super nice. It's got four USBs on the bottom and also a plug right there and a USB-C. So you, it's very easy. That's, this is for EU, you can see EU, you know, the UK, and then the US. Cotopaxi hat, wore it into town whenever I wasn't, oh yeah, that's another thing pictured, is my sun hat. My sun hat I wore everywhere. It was called, it's by Hemlock Hat Company. Incredible. It's my, I think, fourth hat. And I gave it to a little kid. I didn't need it anymore. So, um, didn't want to carry it around on planes and everything. So, yeah, I really enjoyed the hat. It great for protecting sun. It ac actually has a sweatband in the, around the brim. So, kept sweat out of my eyes. Great with rain. So, that's about it. The only other thing I would mention is uh, obviously you're gonna want something to rest your feet in out of your shoes. So we both brought oh yeah flip flops. Good call. So 
On top of having a really good pair of shoes, you're also gonna need a durable pair of flip-flops. You're gonna do a fair amount of walking in these as well if you plan on being a tourist. So invest into a nice pair of flip-flops. Um, this brand is... Um, Sanook. Sanook. So they're nice leather flip-flops. Um, thank you, Marla, for getting us our flip-flops. <laughs> Thank you, Marla. Thank you. Um, that's pretty much it, though. Anyway, that's pretty much it. Um, <laughs> um, just like your basics, like water bottle, things like that, that's kind of personal discretion. Would recommend having at least a water bottle that carries a liter of water. So we, I just picked up, I brought a smart water bottle from back home, and that got pretty dirty, pretty gross. Uh, so recycled that. Bought another one. Uh, one liter water bottle is all you need. Don't be bringing in uh, your camelbacks with the big water bladders, all that. Don't be bringing in four or five liters of water. One liter of water. Drink plenty of water before you go to sleep. Drink plenty of water when you wake up and fill along the way. You're good. There's plenty of water spots all along the Camino. Um, you're not gonna run out of water um, and there's just no reason to carry another two or three ounce, or two, three pounds of water if you don't have to. Um, I just have my handy dandy REI um, water bottle. Yeah, that's pretty much it. If you guys need any links to anything, if you have any questions, please feel free to drop anything down below in the comment section. Yeah. We'd be more than happy to link anything that we can find that we bought on Amazon and recent purchases down below. Um, we don't have any affiliate links or anything yeah. so just but we can cheat you guys some recommendations or yeah. do our best um, other than that that's about it um, thank you for coming to our packing list video um, if you are new here go ahead and go back and check out our Camino videos they were a hell of a ride um, so thanks <laughs> thanks for joining us yeah. um, the honeymooners are out Yes, I forgot to mention both of us brought trekking or I brought trekking poles and Chris bought a um, walking stick while we were in St. Jean, which is where we started. I think that was probably the best thing I could have done was to buy trekking poles. They really accelerate you into walking faster and keep you going. So something maybe you can think about before going. So I bought mine on Amazon. They were like $25. You don't have to buy like the black diamond, super like $120 expensive ones. They lasted me all through the trail and I, recycled them laughter so anyway that's it oh yeah just kidding that's not it we're really good at this <laughs> um so one last thing is headlamp we used headlamps probably twice three times maybe yeah. maybe three times so definitely added weight that we didn't need depends how early you're gonna get up if you get up pretty early you might need them but if you're getting up around like a regular time like seven sun's already going to be up so yeah at least in the summer so if you plan on doing some crazy you know sunrise hikes or waking up really early if you're walking in the winter time i'd probably invest in a headlamp but other than that is uh personal. yeah it's personal preference so anyway that's it see ya <laughs>